Hot mic. Hey everybody! Woo! Guess what day it is? It's Tuesday. Whoever out there is a music person, I need a little totally Tiffany intro intro music, something I can dance to a little bit. Is it time? Are we on the numbers? 9.57. 9.57. I have three minutes to just blather on about nothing. <laughs> My son is goofing around behind the camera, as is his nature, right? Ooh, yeah, I did. Okay, so what should we be talking about? Well, we're just sort of hanging out. I'm trying to think if I've had any questions recently that I could answer. Um, I hear Karen downstairs adding some comments. Um, but let me think. What do we need to talk about? What's a new? You guys already know all about our new fabric file system, right? Perfect for your cube storage. So if you have, if you sew or you have friends who sew, the fabric files are a great way to organize fabric by project or by color. Look how nice and neat that is. Oh, I love it so much. Okay, I don't even sew, but I still love it. Isn't that amazing? Um, what else? Last week we did photos. Photos are challenging for so many people. I hope you all took the time to make a family timeline because it is fun and it's also gonna help you and motivate you and inspire you to keep moving forward with your photos, whether they're digital or um, a printed version of the photos. What else? So what other announcements do I have going on? Let's see. New and exciting products. If you didn't check out the foil quill when it was on HSN, super cool, <coughs> excuse me, new product from American Crafts. So you could make a little note of that. Also, for those of you who are friends and fans of George and Ken of Crafts by Two, which you can find them on YouTube and Facebook, Crafts by Two, they have been working on getting their studio cleaned up and organized. We need to put a little pressure on them to um, get that done and show us some pictures, Ken and George. So if you don't follow Crafts by Two on YouTube or on Facebook, go look them up. They're just great guys, super funny, super crafty, do a couple of retreats every year um, in New York. So they're not close nearby to where I am, but, um, but put a little pressure on them. Say, hey, we wanna see your cleaned up studio. Woo! What else? Who else do I need to talk about today? Is that it? Max wants me to talk about him, but he already doesn't need any comments. What time is it, Max? 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock! Let's get started. Okay. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Embellishment Challenge. This is challenge number four of this series. If you are brand new to the Get Organized Challenge, welcome. We're so glad that you found us. A couple of things happen uh, during Get Organized Challenge. First thing is, depending on what you're watching, there is a chat box on the side or down the bottom. Um, <laughs> if you have a question, type the word question in all caps, and Karen will watch for that as best she can. She's monitoring several different channels, and she'll answer questions um, if she can. And if she can't, she'll jot them down and bring them up at the end of the presentation, so I'll try to answer them myself at the very end. Uh, we do a contest every week for progress posts, and all you have to do to get entered in the contest is put up a progress post either on Facebook or send it in via email, and then you will get in the drawing to win a prize. We give away two prizes every week for progress posts, so you definitely want to participate in that. The details on that come in the follow-up email that comes out this afternoon. So if you don't, know how, don't have our email address or need more information on that, check for the follow-up email that comes out this afternoon. If you are not getting your follow-up emails, we did change email servers this year or be, just before this class. So you may need to re-sign up, go to the Get Organized Challenge page and just re-register. And then you should get a little notification that says, you know, your registration is complete or whatever it says. And if you're still not getting the emails, email customer service at totally-tiffany.com and Leanne will check into your account and find out what's going on. Um, there are, there's a downloadable printable handout, get organized challenge page, scroll to the bottom. You'll see a block for each one of the classes, click on the class you're attending. And then all the details are there as, as well as the download for today's class. Definitely want to join us on Facebook, um, in the 2011 get organized challenge group. 
So look for that group. Again, if you have trouble finding it, it'll be in the follow-up email. Last but not least, there is a little bit of a time delay. So if we get to the end of class and you're asking questions and no, or towards the end and no one's responding, it could be because you're on a two or three minute delay. So if your questions don't get answered, please email us with those questions at customer service or you can send them to, or you can post, post them on the Facebook group. We'll do our best to answer them. Okay, let's talk about this week's winners. Woo, everybody loves a winner. Everybody loves a winner. And Max just started the recording of the class. So, okay, first winner, Arlene Myers. Um, Put up her progress report. Put up her progress report. She's done a lot of paper storing and organization this week. Way to go, Arlene! Arlene, you are the winner of a twenty-five dollar totally Tiffany gift certificate, and Karen will reach out to you and get that to you. And second up, our winner is Kathleen Olson. And Kathleen Olson went through a lot of pictures, and she took the time to make a spreadsheet and list out all the different things that were stored in that photo box. Cause there's some weird things that she's not going to scrap, but now she has a list of them and where they are. So super smart. Uh, Kathleen, Kathleen also is going to get a totally Tiffany gift card. And I want to encourage you to, um, read the progress post winners on Facebook and you can get all the details on the spreadsheet that she created listing events so it's easier to find photos that she's not going to scrap but that she may need in the future. We also had an ugly photo contest um, which is always very entertaining and Julie Urbeck is one of our first winners for the ugly photo contest and Julie has just a picture of a corner of a room it's like some carpeting and she says she's had it for almost 45 years so probably time to purge that bad boy and no no better time than now because it did get you a prize so now it's time for it to go bobby and day also has a kind of a creepy picture of a tarantula hanging on a tree branch so i don't know it's almost halloween so it is kind of an ugly spider for sure but um it's a winner right now, I guess. So there you go. Um, so the two of you, Bobby Ann Day and Julie Urbic, both winners of the Ugly Photo Contest. So we're going to have Ugly Embellishment Contest this week. So as you're sorting through the things and putting things in your purge box and in your garbage can, make sure you pull out that ugliest possible embellishment that you ever spent money on and post a picture of it up and you might win next week. Uh, dun, 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 dun. Okay, let's talk about goals for this challenge. Our goal for this challenge is how to combine and conquer your embellishments, right? You want to have them easy access, um, easy to take out, easy to put away. These are our, always our goals, right? And one of the challenges with embellishments is that we get in our heads that we have to keep like things together. All my buttons over here, all my brads here, beads, die cuts, stickers, ribbon, washi tape, whatever it is, group by type of thing, that isn't really how we use things, or that's not how we're going to get the best use out of things, right? You want to think about organizing your crafting supplies the same way you organize your silverware drawer, right? When you open the silverware drawer, everything in the drawer gets used together. You take it all out together, you use it together. When it's clean, you put it all back together. It's all in one place. It makes it really easy to set the table. But your crafting supplies aren't that way. You might have Buttons over here, brads over here, beads over here. What if you did that with your silverware? Forks over here, knives over here, spoons over here. It would be a pain in the neck to set the table, right? So I want you to go back to that theory of how am I keeping things together I use together. Sort of combine and conquer is our mission. And we want to do that with embellishments the same way you do it with things like silverware, okay? So we're going to go through the whole process just like we have for the other, I, the first two classes or the, the first two actual working classes. Because the first class doesn't, is more of a lecture. Um, so the first thing we're gonna do is get ready, get ready to get organized. And we're going to start with a four section system, which you already know. If you are just jumping in right now and you haven't read the four section system or watched the video on it, you wanna use that link that's coming in your follow up email so that you can watch the four section system video. You want to gather the things together that you are going to use to organize your embellishments. And that could be a scrap rack. It could be Ziploc bags or binders or boxes, whatever you're going to do. You want to make sure that you have the right tools for organizing your supplies. Um, 
you got to have an organized only space, right? So some place that those things are going to go. So that could be empty pages in your scrap rack or it could be empty room on your shelf if you're putting things into boxes. But where are your organized things going to go when they're done? And then, of course, you always going forward forever, you are going to have your purge box handy. So as you go through and start cleaning things up, it's very easy to put those things in the purge box. All right, so what do, we, what do we do to get our embellishments organized? Because they come in all different shapes and sizes of things, right? One of the cool things about scrapbooking and card making is that there are all these events that we might wanna attend outside of our home. And hauling things like these little cute bottles to events so that you have all your embellishments is really very difficult. So the first thing you wanna do is think about how your embellishments are stored and how you can make them um, smaller and easier to find both in your home and when you're traveling. And one of the easiest ways to deal with those types of things is to put them into small Ziploc bags, right? They are lightweight, they are portable, they're gonna fit in your scrap rack pages, they're gonna fit in your storage box, they're gonna go into the pockets of your binder or whatever you're using and they're gonna take up a whole lot less space than these. So all I did was with this little empty one is I sorted out the two different sizes of embellishments and now they're both in little Ziploc bags. So anything that's small, like buttons, eyelets, um, glitter, anything like that can go in a small Ziploc bag and then it's gonna fit in whatever container that you're using more easily. This is another thing that, um, I had a bunch of plastic letters that came in this packaging. Well, it's too thick and bulky to put anywhere and it doesn't really stand up because it's not like a square or anything, right? So it's super hard to store. So anything like this, how are you gonna consolidate down and make it more storable? And generally a Ziploc bag, I don't think I'm supposed to use the word Ziploc, a zip close, reclosable style bag is a good option. Same thing if you're coming, if you have things like this, this is just a small uh, spool of Halloween ribbon a little brain dump there, right? This is a four by six card. So I can take all my little Halloween ribbons, wrap them around this four by six card and put it right into the pocket of my scrap rack, right? Or right into a storage box, whatever tool you're using, rather than having a bunch of little spools of ribbon around, this is a great way to consolidate all of them into one nice, neat, easy to see card. And you can do it by theme, by sentiment, by color, however, you know, calendar year, whatever you're going to do. So it makes it easy to condense it down. Now, when I'm talking about this, I'm not talking about ribbon junkies, right? If you are a ribbon junkie and you have hundreds of spools of ribbon, I do not want you to unwrap all the ribbon and put it on cards. What I do want you to do is get that ribbon organized into whatever ribbon box you have. And hopefully it's a single layer box still following the four section system. So you'll have a box that has very similar to what we do with washi tape. Um, Max, over on the shelf where the washi tape is, straight ahead and about eye level, straight ahead, about eye level, is there an eight and a half uh, punch pack that's loaded with washi tape on that shelf? Where is that? It, it just came back with me from, oh, from a show, so I'm not sure where it ended up. But it's the same concept, right? If you have tons of ribbon, you, you want to organize it in the four section system so that if you think, oh, it's Christmas, um, you can go right to your, and you want to use ribbon, you can go right to the holiday section of ribbon. Don't unroll, unwrap everything. So this is more if you have a few, three, four, five of these little holiday ribbons and you just want to keep them together, um, this is the way to do it and get them into your scrap rack or into whatever storage system you're using for embellishments. All right, so eyelets, brads, anything like that is you, you want to find a way to make it incorporate it into whatever storage tool that you're using. All right, so now how are you actually going to go through the process of sorting? You are going to create some sorting templates. Mine are minis. So uh, I made them small so it was easy to kind of lay out and show you how to use them. But you're going to use um, 12 by 18 paper from, I got mine from the dollar store and draw a six inch column down one side and list everything that goes on that sorting template. And this follows the four section system and then follows your themes and sentiments list. So if you did not make a themes and sentiments list yet, you definitely need to do that now. 
you should have done it when you did your paper organizing, but this is gonna guide you through the process of what needs to go on your sorting templates. So alphabets and numbers, definitely. And then all the things in B for me, beach, baby, birthday, T is for travel. And then I've got the calendar year, so fall, winter, and then I go into the rainbow, right? You are not necessarily going to need to spread out or have all of your sorting templates out at one time because you probably already have some of your things sorted in such a way that maybe you only need colors. So maybe if you're just dealing with eyelets, all you need is your color sorting templates out to sort those eyelets by colors, right? So whatever, um, we're going to talk about what you're sorting in just a few minutes. That will dictate how many of your sorting templates you need you might need them all, in which case you're gonna need your big dining room table or you're gonna to need to place them around the countertops in your kitchen. I think many of you heard this story. The first time I did this system, I put everything on the floor in my house. I pushed all the furniture back against the wall. My living room and dining room at that house ran together. So I just had this huge floor space Everything after everything was pushed back and I just made this trail of sorting templates um, all along the floor. And so that worked out great because no one was home that weekend. If you have kids and dogs and cats and all that kind of shenanigans going on at your house, you need to keep that in mind as well. One of the things about sorting a little bit at a time, which is what I'm going to encourage you to do, is that you can do a little bit of sorting and then put it away and then do a little bit more sorting and put it away so you don't end up with quite such a big mess. So that if something happens, you're not um, sort of redoing or you're not like having to scoop everything up and put it away. Okay, so the first thing you're gonna do is create your sorting templates. And then you are going to spread them out wherever you're gonna use them. And then you are gonna start with one box, one bin, one drawer, one tote, one container of items and you're gonna sort them onto your sorting templates. So I have this little pile right here of things that have been pulled out of my scrap rack for different reasons. So this is a perfect opportunity for me to put them away. Now, if you've already been through the challenge and you are just kind of dialing things in, you probably have a pile just like this that's on your workstation um, that from projects that you've done and not put things away. So this is a perfect time to clean that up. So I'm just gonna go through each pile. So that's baby, this is Halloween. So it's gonna go in fall, more Halloween, birthday birthday, travel. So just easily sorting through each of the things in your pile or that box or bin or drawer or tote and then using those sorting guides to, I have some 4th of July things here. I'm just gonna put them before fall. So I don't have my 4th of July thing out or my summer thing out. So alphabets and numbers. So things that got used, got taken out and then didn't get put back. Christmas red scrap, winter, winter, winter. So this is interesting, it's two things. So these little, these are little three dimensional stickers and they're out of their packaging. So one of the things I'm gonna encourage you to do is rather than take things out of their packaging and put them in their scrap rack or whatever storage container you're using, for things that are dimensional like this, just cut the top off the package so it's open and then you can use the packaging that it's in to create a clear cover on it. So things like these that are dimensional, they're gonna hook on everything. It's gonna be very difficult um, to keep them nice and neat. And you can see this one's like even broken. The little strap is broken off of it. But if I would have kept it in that clear pouch, it would be, it would not be destroyed. But that's Christmas. Little tip there, right? This is Halloween. This is Christmas. Red and pink. Blue, blue. But that's this process of just whatever pile it is that you're sorting. And it might just be all stickers. It might be all die cuts. It might be all embellishments. You're gonna choose the sorting templates that work best. So I have two more alphabets and numbers. And then once you get to this point, you've sorted that first container. Now you're gonna put those things away. So I didn't bring my whole scrap rack in here, but I did bring in this couple of sections that I knew I was gonna use. So now I'm gonna to go to my rainbow section and I am gonna find pockets that fit the different sizes of things. So this is just going right into red. Red and pink, I have red and pink together. 
This is also going into red and pink, but it's much smaller. And one of the things about putting things in pockets is that you can see things on both sides because they're clear. So if you put them in some forward and some backward, that's going to make it really simple. Then this is going to go in my red scrap master, which I don't have. Now I have this cool jar of pink sequins, but this is a big bulky jar. So I know I had a little Ziploc bag somewhere. It was in my hand. Did I put it on my shelf? Hmm. I took it out because I knew I was going to use it. Hold that thought. I have more. Huh? I said Ziploc again. So I have this little box of all different sizes of Ziploc bags. And I'm just going to put these sequins, which will get buried somewhere, right? Now, you probably don't need all of them. I'm going to put them all in there because it's easy and they all fit, right? But you might not need 10,000 pink sequins. You might. But you might not. But you, you could put them all in or you could put some in back stock. Um, that's really not enough for back stock. But now they're just going to go right into my pink and red section where I'm going to use them. I'm going to go to blue and add my blue things. And this is the, as simple as the process is. Just going through the piles because you have everything in, in the pile by section. So now I can put everything away by section. I'm not like nickel and diming my time back and forth between multiple sections. Just don't want to fit in there. Oh, the package. There we go. So again, these are dimensional. I'm going to leave them in the package. And probably what I actually should do, if I had scissors right here, I would cut the top off the package so that it was easy to pull that um, acetate sheet that has the bling on it in and out easily once I'm ready to use it. I got more blue here. But you can see how quick and easy it is to just work through each of the things. So I'm finished with the, rain, the things that belong in my rainbow section. And now I'm going to be able to take the next section and do the next piece of it, right? So with travel, um, I also have, so depending on the type of tool that you're using, right, if you're keeping categories, so this is the scrap master, right? If you have small categories, you want to keep things filed on a shelf, the scrap master is going to work also for organizing that same way. So each scrap master pocket um, is perfect for an entire theme. If you're not a huge junkie, keep that in mind. So it's not going to hold as much as like a scrap rack or a box or whatever. But so boom, travel things are put away back on the shelf labeled. Um, I don't have my different themes, but if you were, if you were using just boxes, or something like this. So this is all blues and greens, right? I can put this on the shelf. I can label it down the side blues and greens, and I have all my blue and green embellishments in one nice, neat little bundle. So depending on the type of storage that you're using, similarly, well, football, everything in here, it's football paper, football scraps, football embellishments, all in one nice, neat, tidy bundle. When I'm gonna work on that theme, I'm gonna be able to pull it off the shelf and use it. So depending on the storage tool that you're using, and you can see the scrap rack is really very simple for loading things in, and also very simple when you wanna find things, you can just flip through. Doing something like this, most of your things are gonna be visual as well, or using something like the scrap rack, things are gonna be visual as well that way. I messed up my thing. Oh, look, I found my Ziploc bag. Amazing. All right. So you are going to work through oh, one container at a time. That is your goal. So I just spread all those things out. Now I'm going to put all of them away, right? Then I'm going to start again. There's a couple of reasons to do that. The first one is if you get everything spread out, and you have tons of stuff spread out. And then all of a sudden you remember, oh my gosh, I'm having people over for dinner or for some reason you have to clean it all up. You're going to have to scoop all this stuff up and dump it into a big box or tote or something 
And then your brain is going to say, that didn't work. This idea of organizing didn't work. Look at that box. It's a mess. You're going to have to start all over again, right? So you want to work from start to finish so that doesn't happen. But also, because when you complete a task like this, small as it is, you already know this if you've been listening to me for the last three weeks, your brain goes, wow, this is amazing. I got that done. I'm so cool. I'm checking things off my list. And your brain is happy and motivated and inspired. And that gives you motivation to keep moving forward. So sometimes it's overwhelming. We have years and years worth of craft supplies to get through. Um, but do it in little chunks because that will set your brain on fire and it will keep you motivated and keep you moving forward. The other thing is, if you organize these few things, and I talked about this with, when we started talking about paper, the next time you sit down to scrap, this much stuff is organized. So if you're going to work on Halloween, now you've got that much more Halloween stuff organized. It's all in one nice, neat, neat little place. You can access it easily. And again, your brain goes, wow, this is really working. Look how easy it was for me to find my Halloween things by using the four section system. Everything was right there. So work in small chunks and do each small task from start to finish rather than trying to do thousands of items all at one time. All right. These are all pictures of section of different Okay, why are we doing a container of time? Just talked about that. We are on to the challenge for this week, right? So this week, your challenge is to sort and store one container, no, sort and store one container a day for four of the next seven days. So your goal is to sort four containers. You can do them all at once, you can spread it out, but four containers is your mission. Uh, number two is to set a purge goal. If you haven't done that already, how much stuff are you going to get rid of? I talked about purge goals earlier, but basically you can set your purge goal by the pound, by the depth. So you could say, okay, I'm going to get rid of four inches of stuff, or I'm going to get rid of two pounds of stuff. You could say, I'm going to get rid of anything that's more than five years old, or I'm going to get rid of anything that I don't love. Whatever that goal is, you need to write it down. Goals not put to paper are seeds without soil, and they will never grow, okay? So write down your purge goal. My purge goal is to so, sort of half an inch for every year I've been crafting. That's a great one. You probably have accumulated a half an inch of extra, extra stuff every year, um, whatever it is. Set your purge goal. Make sure you have your purge box ready to go. Then you are going to sort four to six inches of paper. So if you haven't finished paper, you need to get through four to six more inches of paper. Uh, sort one year of photos, two if you have a helper. So we talked last week about recruiting a family member to help you with photo organization. If you can do that again, you want to get through two years of photos. Post your progress on Facebook or email your progress post in to customer service so that you can get in on the drawing. Now, progress posts uh, need to be in by 9 o'clock Monday morning because we draw them on Monday, so Sunday night, put it on your planner, put it on your calendar, put a note on your work surface, whatever you need to do, set a phone reminder to turn in your progress post. And remember, progress posts don't have to be perfect. You don't have to say, I got 100% of my paper organized. A progress post is just your way of telling the world, yes, I'm moving forward, yes, I'm getting things done, and then it doesn't, it doesn't have to be perfect, it just has to be perfect is the enemy of good, right? Just need a good progress post that says, yes, I got things done this week, and this is what they were. Um, and then if you have an ugly embellishment, which we all do, you want to post a picture of your ugly embellishment in the ugly embellishment comment and the ugly embellishment contest post on our Facebook group. Again, if you don't do Facebook, you can email in your ugly embellishment with your comment about it and your name, and we will post it in the Facebook page for you. So if you don't want us to use your last name, just like first name and an initial or something like that, be sure and let us know in the email and then we will just do that and that way everybody can see and uh, we can choose the ugliest embellishment. And number seven, last but not least, enjoy your reward. So whatever you set aside as a reward for making progress on getting your embellishments organized, you want to definitely take advantage of that and um, enjoy that special reward that you have set up for yourself. Okay, so that is it, I think, for embellishment organization. Karen hasn't come upstairs with any questions, but I'm going to do, I'll talk a little bit about the products 
um, that I was showing earlier. So if you wanna know what those are, stick around and I will actually tell you the names of each of the products that I was using earlier. And those are on our Facebook page as well and on the Get Organized Challenge page as well. So thanks so much for tuning in. For those of you who are just here for class and you're tuning out, for those of you who wanna learn a little bit more about the products we offer for getting your embellishments organized, stay with me. Uh, all right, let's start with this little gem right here. So this is our one and a half inch punch pack. And if you've used punch packs for anything, um, you know that they are so easy to use. And if you travel with your supplies, they're super easy to travel with. They're lightweight, they're clear. And what I did in here, this is just all um, blue and green, but I just took, this little box is part of the um, desk made collection. It is called, a clearly organized divider box. And um, Karen, if you can make a note of that, we can get up, get out a link to them. These fit in our stadium arrangers. Like this, right? They segment off the compartments of the small stadium arranger, but they also work great for something like this. So it's just lightweight, clear box. And that is how I contained all the washi tape in here. There's no lid on the box, but the size of the box and the size of the washi tape keep everything nice and neat and tidy inside that little bag. So the one and a half inch punch pack, this also comes in a one inch and a two inch. So there, those are options as well. If you're organizing embellishments, your rainbow. This is our 12 by 12 fab file. And this one is loaded up with embellishments by color. And I also use the pockets that come with it to sort by the embellishments by color as well. So the, these boxes are, are nice because the dimensions of them, right? Every, we're using so much 12 by 12 things, it's nice for that. They go on a shelf easily, they travel easily. The downside to them is if you wanna see what's in the box, you have to dump everything out, right? Other than, I guess, the couple things that are in the pockets. But um, So it's not as handy for uh, actually working because you're gonna have to dump everything out to go through it but it is an easy storage system, inexpensive storage system. I talked, well, there's always this too. 12 by 12 Ziploc bag. Again, put your, your smaller embellishments in the front, bigger embellishments and paper in the back so you get a good visual of what's in there. But this will work in a file box or in a milk crate or something like that. And you're gonna have everything together. Another sort of downside to this though is everything drops to the bottom so your bags are gonna be a little bit fatter. But still, uh, a workable solution, very inexpensive. I talked a little bit about the, let me find it here, this is the one. So this is the Scrap Master. These come in a set of five and they're tabbed on the side. So you can see this one I just tabbed with the word travel. Now I use our Shut Your Flap tabs and my label maker. So the, so the tab itself is blue and I just printed travel on it and I do it on both sides. So no matter which side I'm gonna approach this file from, I can see it. Now, the um, scrap masters do fit into all of our paper storage options. So paper handlers, paper storage boxes, even the 12 by 12 fab file are gonna hold these. So if you're looking for a way to store them um, or transport them, those are all gonna be uh, good options for that as well. And then as far as the scrap rack goes, the scrap rack is definitely by far the easiest um, product and the most accessible for your supplies. So if you're unfamiliar, I just pulled, so this is a spinder. It has a hook side of hook and loop fabric, AKA Velcro on it. And it goes on my scrap rack base, which is right, which is like this back here. But you can see that the different pocket sizes are ideal for different types of embellishments, right? And as I'm flipping through, I've got things facing forward and things facing backwards, so I can see things from both sides. So when I'm looking for that particular embellishment, I can go right to the color and say, okay, I need a green button, go right to green and see all the button choices that I have. One of the nice things about this is when I go looking for that green button, I'm also gonna see all of the other options that I have. So I may have forgotten that, oh, I have tags or I have eyelets or what about that cute twine, all of those types of things. And now they're all gonna pop up for me. So while I go looking for a green button, I'm gonna see all my other green embellishments as well. So it makes it really simple to find 
not only what you're looking for, but also see all the other things that might also work on that page or layout. So as far as the scrap rack goes, the, pot, the page designs, the pocket page designs, there are, I think, 14 of them now. And they come in every size from a little three by four pocket all the way up to a 12 and a half by 12 and a half pocket designed for paper. So depending on the types of uh, embellishments that you use and the size. So this is going to fit perfectly in the four by six. This is going to fit in the five by seven pocket page, right? This is going to fit in the little Traders 12, which is the three by four pockets. So a variety of pockets in each section are really going to serve you well to see the most product quickly and easily. All right. Oh, one other thing I didn't. These, this is our embellishment storage page. So this is a little bit heavier material and it has these little flat tops that have a locking tab on them. So if you've got a ton of bulky embellishments and you want to put them in something that's a little bit more secure, the embellishment storage page has a pocket in the middle. So that's where I have scraps of paper. But I've got bling and glitter and even a little spool of ribbon in here, beads, all the different things. And I can just see everything very quickly and easily. So this is the embellishment storage page. It's the only page we make that is not 12 and a half inches wide. So the tabs for these are on the top for labeling. You're going to label them on the top rather than on the side. All right. I think that covers everything that I flashed about during class today. But if you do have questions or want more information about, about products, you can email us, customer service at totally-tiffany.com, um, or you can post on our Facebook page. That's a great way to get quick information because there's so many helpful people on the Facebook page. So thanks so much for tuning in today. Uh, have a busy week, get a lot of embellishments sorted, and I will look forward to seeing you next Tuesday. Take care. Thanks for joining me.